What's up everybody, AnimeX here, and in this video, I will finally add another part into the Tentail series, due to you guys actually hitting the 5,000 like goal. Now, that is pretty surprising to me, and I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I did not think you would hit that high of a like goal that quickly. It's honestly pretty cool to see that you guys care that much about a series, but I digress. Now, while I could increase the like goal back to ridiculous heights, I decided that uh, if you were on my community tab, you would see there's not gonna be a like goal for this. This video will not come out again or this series i should say will not come out again this year but it will become part of the daily grind when i get on my seven day video or seven videos per week daily grind in 2020 so keep that in mind no light goal but this will not be coming out for the rest of the month of december you guys are welcome for the freebie uh as usual i'll recap the last part of the series and then jump right into the new materials so without further ado let's get started <music> last part of this what if we saw naruto interact with the sound and Orochimaru, and basically them offered naruto enough bower to take on the akatsuki this being too good of a deal for him to pass up in order for him to save his friends and his village naruto decided to take this basically with no hesitation he ended up getting his he, he ended up getting the curse mark from Orochimaru, along with heading off to them into his hideout for about one year of full training until he decided that enough was enough. He had become strong enough to take on the Akatsuki, and that's where he basically killed everyone within Orochimaru's hideout, and he basically eventually got out and blew it up. And that's where we left off, with Naruto being transformed into his Biju state and blowing up Orochimaru's hideout, essentially drawing the attention of the Akatsuki. So that's where we'll jump right back into the story. Now, like I said, Naruto had just shot a Bijou bomb, blowing up Orochimaru's hideout and drawing the attention of the Akatsuki. This is after this, he sits and waits so he can attack the Akatsuki when they come to him. Naruto, while waiting to be attacked, is formulated and going over the plan that he made before he drew the Akatsuki in. I know the abilities of at least five Akatsuki members, so that means I know the counters to each and every one of them. The rest I have to figure out on the fly. Naruto thinks about this and thinks to the masked man, knowing that he'll have to figure out a way to negate his warping ability while he thinks about how to handle the others. The Akatsuki, becoming aware of Naruto and the Jubi's chakra, head out getting ready to attack and subjugate the Jubi to their control, sending out Itachi, Kisame, Hidan, and Kakuzu in order to basically get to where Naruto is and basically attack him. Naruto senses that some Akatsuki members are coming closer and closer to him, so he starts getting ready, silencing his mind and preparing himself to take on the chaos of the Jubi in his mind and psyche. Naruto then notices four chakra signatures that he recognizes, and he basically realizes something. Oh no, what are they? Naruto's thoughts trail off as he senses Kakashi, Sasuke, Sakura, and Hinata, all heading towards Naruto at high speeds as well. Naruto panics because of the scale of attack that he wants to use on the Akatsuki, and it's basically something that'll get, that'll get them caught in the radius of the attack if they are too close. Naruto then makes a quick decision. He has to draw the Akatsuki away from the hideout, but just when he's about to do this, Kisame appears and jumps and swings Samehata down at Naruto, trying to take him out in one shot, although Naruto is able to dodge rather easily. I can't waste the Jubi Shocker on one opponent, I need the entire Akatsuki here for that. Naruto then activates a second stage of Curse Mark, getting ready to fight. When the marks spread, Naruto's skin turns his reddish-brown color. His eyes turn slit-like and he gets much larger in stature, growing at least half a foot. Fangs then grow from Naruto's face as he prepares to fight. Naruto then turns around and is almost hit by Hidan's scythe, although he's able to jump back in time to dodge. Naruto then makes one true seeking staff, the weapon that can negate immortality, and he throws that at Hidan, trying to kill him in one shot. And just before it hits, Kakuzu shoots a blast and knocks his staff off course, forcing Naruto to summon it back to him, stopping him from killing Hidan right then and there. Naruto then closes his eyes, focusing completely on his Senjutsu ability and realizes that Team 7, along with Hinata, while they are pretty far away from the fight, are closing in, making Naruto extremely anxious to end this fight as quickly as possible. Naruto then summons an orb and blitzes Hidan, cutting him in half with the orbs. The orb then quickly transforms into an axe as he spins around and slices Hidan up into tiny bits, destroying him utterly. Naruto then, after doing this, is hit by Matarasu, which does nothing except annoy him. Kakuzu then shoots a fire style attack at Naruto that just washes over his shoulders, not affecting him at, at all. Naruto then realizes that the Akatsuki members attacking him are now merely decoys, and as he realizes this, he sees them all jump away, as Naruto sees a thick cloud of smoke enter the area that he was in. And upon breathing it in, Naruto's lungs start screaming in pain. Naruto uses Shinra Tensei to dispel the smoke, although the damage was already done. 
The gas was sent by Sasori, and while it is meant to be lethal, Naruto is able to heal from it, but the pain that it brings Naruto staggers him. Leaving him open to Kisame, running back towards him and hitting him in the ribs with Samehata, hitting him so hard that it sends him flying in, siphons off a ton of chakra in the process. Naruto is laying down, dazed from that combo attack. C come on, I should be stronger than this, what's going on? Naruto then realizes that he's holding back because he fears that when he launches a large attack, his old team will be caught in the explosion. This is a subconscious thing. Naruto knows what he has to do as he steadies himself and walks back into the Akatsuki's field of vision with a new sense of readiness. Naruto then sees a horrifying sight. Kisame, when he attacked, didn't absorb the Jubi Chakra, he absorbed the Curse Mark Chakra, giving him the ability to pass Samihara around and impart very, very tiny bits of Sage Chakra or the Curse Mark Chakra onto them, manifesting a small version of the Curse Mark. Was this your plan? Naruto wonders this, as this means that all of their attacks can now do damage to him, meaning that they are now that much more dangerous. Naruto just smirks at first, then starts bursting into a hysterical laughter that disturbs the Akatsuki. <laughs> the 10 minutes starts now. Naruto then activates his Jubi Cloak and instantly pulls in all of the Akatsuki using Bancho Tenin and stabs him with his tail that, you know, that reside on his back. Itachi, when, his, when hit, reveals that he was merely a clone and blows up. Sasori and Kakuzu just don't die from that attack and Kisame is able to heal using the chakra from Samehata. Naruto then looks at all the Akatsuki and attacks and blitz, he basically goes up, blitzes Sasori and dismantles him before he can react. Naruto then turns his attention to Kisame and charges him, dodging an initial swing, and then Naruto summons an orb and, and cuts off Kisame's hand, severing Samehata from his connection. Before he can heal, Naruto grabs Samehata and kicks Samehata away, making sure that he can't use it at the moment. He then continues to fight off. Naruto then looks to Itachi, and knowing that Sasuke's dream is to kill him, decides to take the non-lethal approach against him and punch him in the stomach hard enough to knock him out taking him out of the fight for now. Naruto was then stabbed from behind by one of Sasori's puppets. This puppet actually had poison on it, numbing Naruto's entire body, make, meaning that he can't move. Naruto then, through sheer force of will, stands up and leaps at Sasori, and, threw, and throws a tree-seeking orb at him that hits Sasori and vaporizes him on the spot, destroying his puppet body, his human parts, and all. Naruto then looks up and sees a giant clay object falling from the sky, and as Naruto sees it, it starts exploding. He sees it almost as if in slow motion, but Naruto is quicker than this explosion, as he summons a true singing orb to surround it containing the explosion, making sure that he doesn't die. Naruto then jumps up at Dator and slices him in half, but not before Sasori hits Naruto, or not before Dator hits Naruto with some microscopic bombs that got into half of his body, that blow up, disintegrating half of Naruto's arm and send him spiraling down to the earth with a large crash. Naruto then sees Kisame running towards Samehata, which he threw to the side, and Naruto gets there first, hitting Kisame with it. Naruto then feels pressure in his head. It's already been five minutes, huh? He realizes that he doesn't have much more time in, or in this state if he's going to fight off the Akatsuki like this. Naruto then deactivates his Jubi Cloak, deciding to let it recharge some while he finishes off everyone else but the masked man. Naruto runs around, Kisame in hand, who has taken a liking to the Juvi Tracker that he has, and just before he's about to attack, Naruto is seen by Team 7 along with Hinata, who see Naruto covered in blood in his curse mark state, which shows the monster within Naruto, at least in the physical representation. Naruto turns around and for the first time in a year he has seen his team along with Hinata. This sight nearly brings Naruto to tears, but he calms himself, steadying his heart, knowing that that work still needs to be done, he still needs to make a world where he can protect them. Naruto then rushes over, seeing Kakuzu, and slices him in half, obliterating him along with all five of his hearts in one clean slice. Naruto then turns to his team. One-armed, battered, bruised, and bloodied, he looks at them. Naruto then falls to one knee as he's exhausted. Hinata is the first to run to his aid and help him. Naruto, are you okay? Naruto nods as he tries to stand up shakily. Naruto then looks at his team much closer and notices that they have all changed if it, in expression ever so slightly. The biggest change is from Hinata, who now exudes confidence within herself, and is a notable presence that she did not have before. Naruto looks over to Sakura, who now has this weird diamond on her forehead, which he doesn't really understand, and also has a more confident look in her eyes. Sasuke and Kakashi have changed in similar ways as well. Both of them have a very intense glare that pierces Naruto, and almost seems as if it's analyzing him and every, mo and every moment and movement that Naruto makes. Naruto then smiles, happy to see his friends, but the dizziness from the poison and the minor blood loss from losing his arm kicks in all at once, making Naruto pass out. After passing out, Naruto wakes up mere minutes 
and looks around to see that his head is resting on Hinata's lap, which inadvertently makes him blush, and as a result, Hinata blushes as well. Naruto then quickly gets up as soon as possible trying to get his bearings. How long have I been out? Sasuke speaks up and says that he was only out for a couple of minutes, and that Nar then Naruto's regeneration kicked in. Naruto then nods and feels back to normal and says that he'll be back in a bit. Naruto then senses off to the distance as he gets ready to disappear again and finish off the remaining members of the Ikatsuki. Sasuke then, before he can even do anything, appears in front of him, sword in hand, and giving a look that tells Naruto to stand down. Naruto, taking this as a challenge, stands up, staring Sasuke right back in the face. Get out of my way, Sasuke. Sasuke shakes his head at Naruto. Can't do that, Naruto. You aren't running off by yourself again. Do you understand how much that hurt, having you leave the village, knowing that the reason you left because we weren't strong enough to protect ourselves? Do you, Naruto? Naruto is shocked by Sasuke raising his voice, although Naruto just looks down, darkness shrouding his face. Hurt? <laughs> Pain? Strength? Don't you dare speak those words to me, Sasuke. If you want to talk about something hurting, do you know how much it hurt to have to leave the village, my home, because I needed the strength to protect everyone? If you want to talk about pain, what about my pain of not having anybody in my life and live in the darkness until someone finally steps in and makes you happy and gives you a reason to live, then constantly imagining that ray of light dying because of your own lack of strength? Tell me, Sasuke. You know the comfort of having a family. You have that luxury. How dare you question my motives when all I'm trying to do is protect the ones that keep me going? Naruto looks down, tears streaming down his face as he looks. Sakura tries to walk over and comfort both of them, and when she does, Naruto moves away, shirking from her touch. Sakura. He turns to her. Are you sure you want to comfort me? The one who you call the devil? Naruto's aura turns menacing when he turns to her, scaring Sakura and even putting Sasuke somewhat on edge, forcing her to remember all of the horrible names that she called Naruto only a short year ago. Hinata then walks up to Naruto and slaps Naruto in the face. This sound rings loud and clear into the air. This stuns everyone. Naruto... Sasuke, Kakashi, and Sakura. Then a red mark appears on Naruto's face. Naruto, all of these things are in the past. No matter what decisions we all made, they are behind us. We have to get stronger now. We got stronger now, so you never have to worry about protecting us ever again, okay? Hinata says this, and her words reach Naruto, cutting past all the hard exterior and the fronts that he's put on throughout his entire year of training. Naruto then brings Hinata in for a hug as a single tear falls down his face, as he's happy to finally be back. Naruto pulls back from Hinata and looks at her. He sees her face and for some reason she looks horrified. Naruto then turns as he sees the masked man standing on a tree branch as he's clapping sarcastically to the emotional moment. Naruto's rage returns as he activates his cloak and disappears at the masked man attacking him at full speed. But as soon as he attacks, Naruto looks back and sees a scene that happened such a long time ago. An attack, a projectile to be specific, is attacking directly for Hinata's heart and if it hits it will clearly kill her. And just when Naruto is thinking about turning back, doing his best to get there in time, he knows he won't make it to save her. He sees Hinata start spinning with 360 degree palm rotation deflecting the attack and proving to Naruto that she can handle herself. Naruto continues with his attack, punching the masked man in the face for the first time, finally getting just a little bit of taste of revenge. And that everybody is where I'm going to end part 10 to the What If Naruto the Tenso series. If you guys did enjoy, make sure to hit that like button, even though there's no like goal, just show your support in the video, I'd appreciate that. And I know you guys probably want more, you were thinking you could just hit the like goal and get another part, but I will be limiting it to one this year, that way I can have a lot prepared and planned, so I can go basically daily for as long as possible in 2020. The end goal is to get to 50k uh, by the end of that year, it's a very far ahead goal, but it's something that I really want to get to, so daily next year is kind of the goal i'm preparing for that so yeah that's that's the goal that's the end goal um the what if depending on when this came out the hugo what if should be coming out not tomorrow if this comes out monday like i planned but it should be coming out wednesday and then the senju what if will come out on friday like usual and we'll just continue that schedule until 2020 which is when i'll release a video uh updating you guys on everything that's going to happen and just letting you guys know how the schedule is going to go from there on I will be releasing my schedule for what ifs and what I'll possibly be doing maybe the day before this video actually launches. So if you haven't seen that community chat post already, make sure to go head back and actually look at that so you can uh, vote on any what ifs that you want to take the place of something else and that type of thing. Anyways, as always, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And as always, guys, this is Anime X signing off.